and a wine expert, Malik Sultani, joins us live from San Francisco. And we know a lot of ears have perked up when we talk about that connection. Absolutely, absolutely. Good morning to the both of you. In wine country, uh, climate change does have the wine closure conversation heating up. If you buy a bottle of my wine for you and your husband's 20th anniversary and you hold that bottle for 10 years and you can't wait to open it and then you open it and the wine's corked, that's a huge fail on the part of the industry. A recent report revealed the quality of cork is decreasing, blaming rising temperatures and other environmental factors. From the cork industry standpoint, we're very interested in climate change. Peter Weber with the Cork Quality Council has been evaluating cork for over a decade, and this study has him screaming sour grapes. This study basically took uh, five pieces of thin cork uh, from a very dry part of Portugal and compared it to five pieces of thick cork from a relatively wet part, whatever corks they were comparing were actually genetically uh, the same tree that they have been for hundreds of years. This would be thick cork. The corks are punched out of the side. A thin piece um, might be like this. With the character of cork in question, sixth generation winemaker Stephen Kent Marisu has his sights on screw caps. I love screw caps for their ease of use. I love screw caps for the fact they don't impart TCA, that, that corkiness chemical, into wine. Uh, hopefully I'll have the guts at some day to do everything in screw cap, although there's, there's still marketing disadvantages, especially with higher end wines. With the wine world looking to alternatives, Noma Corks' Don Huffman says when it comes to closures, synthetic stoppers are the cream of the crop. We make a synthetic cork that's made from sugarcane polyethylene. Our wines can't get corked and they have a managed oxygen. Portugal's home to the world's largest cork forest area and cork producer. Amarine's Carlos Jesus says natural cork isn't going anywhere. When you look at cork, you're looking at one of the best sustainability stories around the world. The trees are never cut down. It's a very, very tough tree like any other oak, and I think we're going to survive this climate change is also. Awesome. Despite their differences, everyone agrees global warming isn't waning. We all have to worry about uh, climate change. It's just that, frankly, the cork tree is in a good position to fight it because, A, we can adjust the amount of time we spend between harvesting, and B, the tree can really take a lot. Yeah, bottom line, no one really wants you to get a bad bottle of wine, right? So how can you tell if a wine is corked? Well, what you want to do is pour yourself a glass, give it a swirl and a sniff. And if it smells like wet cardboard or moldy newspapers, my personal favorite, your grandpa's basement, there's a good chance that it's tainted with TCA. And what I like to tell everybody is if you think the bottle of wine is bad, take it back. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to drink a bad bottle of wine. Especially if you're paying a good amount of money for it. Interesting, interesting little twist on the story. All right, Monique Sultani, thank you so much. I appreciate your time.